Watching the documentary the first time, it made me feel a little bit uncomfortable because it was so personal. That's what I'm doing. Gypsy Queen and Proud is a documentary and it's about me and it's about my family and the community that I grew up in and how that has affected me during later life. You've had like two lives, that's what I've seen. You've had your life with your family and hiding who you are and then you've had a life with like me and around my family and that is a lot. It's exhausting. I just wanted to talk about something that I hadn't really seen being talked about before. The pressure's always put on us as a community to be accepting. I sometimes feel like white, gorgeous, gay people do not realise like their place and how they fuel racism. I mean, growing up, I'd never seen those types of conversations happen. Um, and I think it was something that I wanted to do because if I was younger and saw something like that, it maybe would have helped me feel a little bit differently about it. Some people will be rejected by their community. You try being a community that's been historically lynched, enslaved, ethnically cleansed, and then you try and see how progressive you are able to be when you're focused on survival. Being LGBT or being something different from the norm in the community, I think it's so unlocked because it is such a traditional, it comes from a traditional place. I say traditional, it's more binary. I think it's, it's, it's just very binary, that's the word. Um, the men are the men and the women are the women. and that There's no in between, but we all know there's a lot in between and a lot either side. My first memories playing out with all the lads on one of the camps, I felt like I should be playing with the girls in the trailer, with the dolls and doing my hair, and I just didn't feel ever like I fitted in properly. Drag is self-expression, it's confidence, it's power, it's saying, giving a big middle finger to the binary of the world that we see. It's like stepping outside of black and white and into colour. I think Cherry's just the part of me that that I want to be when I'm out of drag. So obviously we're the same person. I wasn't always called Cherry. It's not Cherry specifically that helped me, it's like drag that helped me. This is drag to me. It's, I'm obsessed with them. Drag race will always be a part of my life, definitely, without a doubt. I remember I've spoken about it before, but walking into a room full of out, who were visibly proud queer people, was something that I'd never really done before in that sort of environment. Before that, I'd worked in clubs and drag, but going in that environment where everyone was just Everyone was just so liberated in who they are and they're completely themselves. Drag makes me feel so confident because I don't feel confident out of drag. Really? Like, when, I walked, when I walked into the workroom, I saw all these people come in and I was like, everyone is so confident, everyone is so proud. Through doing drag, you learn so much more about gender identity and so much about your body. It was actually able for me to accept to be black. I actually accept the colour of my own bloody skin by just being around people who are already ostracised for different things, but we all just know how that felt. Watching the documentary the first time, I was, um, I, it made me feel a little bit uncomfortable. I'm not gonna lie to you, I felt uncomfortable watching it. It was because it was so personal. That's what I'm doing. It was a whole different ball game, really, showing like vulnerability as George. Because when I'm in drag, I can talk about things like with satire or in a comedic way. Even though it's how I actually feel, it's like a comedic spin that lessens the blow. In my life, I've just separated drag and me. So then it's just got to a point where I'm like, am I different people? Cherry is just a extreme version of who you really are. It's time to really bring that Cherry energy maybe into George. Balancing George and Cherry, I think it's always going to be a work in progress. Um, but I feel more clarity about it now after doing everything. I mean, the first, when I went to the vaccination centre in the documentary, that was the first time I'd ever really thought about it in that way because I'd never been in drag in like, that sort of professional environment. Recently, I've been working as a nurse in a COVID-19 vaccination centre. Because of my newfound following, the centre have asked me to come in as Cherry to help promote the vaccine. I'm mixing the two and I don't know how to be. I don't know how to act. Different environments, like you put a different face on sometimes. And I think after doing the documentary and going to the vaccination centre and drag, it's, after time it's made me realise like, you're the same person. Um, it's just maybe different parts that you feel more comfortable to show in that area. Is this gonna change the community for LGBT travellers? Well, I hope so, but like, I actually don't know. I don't know if their minds will change. I really hope they do. 
and I hope that watching things like this and hopefully more people will start to speak about it openly, we'll start more conversation and that in turn will change opinion or just change someone's viewpoint of something. And I say it to everyone who I meet, like visibility is the most important thing. If you want to make a change, you have to be visible about it. But I really am ready now to start having those conversations with my family. And I think the only thing that that could do is bring us closer together.